Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kubernetes SIG instrumentation introduction and deep dive session. I'm David Ashpool from Google. Hey, I'm Frederick. I'm the CEO and founder of Polar Signals. I'm Alana Hashman. Uh, I currently work as a principal site reliability engineer at Red Hat, and I'm one of the co chairs of SIG instrumentation. Hey, I'm Han. I uh, am also a co chair of SIG instrumentation. I also work at Google with David Ashpool. Great, so I'm gonna kick us off, uh, and this is what we're going to cover in today's maintainer track session. Uh, so I'm gonna introduce uh, what does SIG instrumentation do? What are we responsible for? And then we'll get into some of our current activities, status updates on what we're doing for the various SIG components, metrics, uh, logs and events, traces, and what's going on with all of our SIG sub projects. Uh, and in each of these sections, uh, one of my co-leads will uh, introduce the topic and what's going on. Uh, then I will close out our talk with some resources on how to get involved in the SIG, how to contribute, uh, where to find us in the various Kubernetes online spaces, and also share some links to related talks. So what does SIG instrumentation do? Our charter, uh, and you can find these slides on the schedule, so uh, you can click all of these links uh, if you want to get a chance to drill down. Uh, but our charter in the Kubernetes uh, community repo says that we cover best practices for cluster observability across all Kubernetes components. And as well, we develop all of these relevant components. So uh, in summary, uh, I like to think of this as working on metrics logs and events, uh, and traces, which are sort of our various pillars of observability within the project. We're also responsible for a number of sub-projects, again, covered in our charter. Uh, but some of those that you might be most familiar with include cube state metrics, K-log, metric server, and many more. So how do we do it? Uh, our SIG activities usually involve triaging and fixing relevant instrumentation issues, reviewing all code changes for metrics.go files, developing new features and enhancements, and maintaining all of our various sub-projects. Hey, Elena, what do you call a chart without any underlying metric data? I don't know. What do you call it, Han? Pointless. Boom, boom, boom. You got to have the drum beat. Uh, so in SIG instrumentation, uh, you'll know me either as the metrics guy or the guy who likes terrible puns. But you're not going to hear me tell a pun about insects because they bug me. All right, that's the last one. Uh, jokes aside, in order to understand how metrics works in Kubernetes, we're going to have to know a little bit about Kubernetes. So just very briefly, Kubernetes is pretty complicated stack, and it has a lot of uh, disparate components. And it gets even more complicated because uh, these disparate components have quite a num large number of interactions, and this can make it difficult to tell if and when something is going wrong. And this is basically where metrics come in. And in Kate, we instrument our binaries using Prometheus clients, which can look something like this. Uh, in general, you're going to have a component that you want to instrument some bit of software. And the software uh, exposes a simple HTTP endpoint, uh, conventionally slash metrics, uh, which is then scraped by some monitoring agent and inserted into a time series database or backend. And uh, for those of you who are already familiar with Prometheus and metrics, this may seem uh, simple and a bit boring. And yeah, it is It is simple enough. Uh, we have some software, and we want to measure stuff. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, so, uh, well, it turns out quite a lot. Uh, metrics can become memory leaks, uh, typically through unbounded cardinality and label values. Uh, even worse, uh, we can have unbounded interpolated metric names. And uh, we can get any of these leaks in any of the Kubernetes binaries. 
these issues can be latent and they can manifest through innocuous underlying changes. Sometimes our metrics just don't do the job properly. Like we have inadequate bucket sizes, um, which don't make any sense. So if you have two buckets for latency metrics, obviously you're not gonna get super helpful latency uh, data. Sometimes the metric says it's actually emitting seconds, but the metric unit it's actually emitting is in microseconds. So that brings us to the stuff that we do uh, involving metrics in SIG instrumentation. Um, first and foremost, uh, due to all of these things that we have encountered in Kubernetes, we overhauled our metrics. This has landed in GA recently. If you want to see the cap, it's a uh, up here. Uh, and this fixed a bunch of inconsistent and bro broken, broken metrics across uh, Kubernetes. But in doing so, we changed the API, and this caused issues for people who were ingesting our uh, older and broken metrics. Uh, and so in order to offset this, we implemented a stability framework so that uh, people who are ingesting Kubernetes metrics can uh, rely on them with uh, a proper deprecation policy. And this landed in beta. And we have slated work to land this into GA in 121. Uh, we have, not only do we focus on unbroken metrics, but we also focus on uh, improving existing metrics. <clears throat> and on the road to alpha, we have pod resource metrics, which is slated to land in 120. And dynamic cardinality enforcement uh, slated to land in 121. But our work doesn't just involve um, fixing metrics and improving and iterating over existing metrics in the in the cube binaries. We also want to make it easier for people to debug Kubernetes clusters. And in order to do that, uh, we wrote this tool called PromQ, which is basically a in-memory Prometheus client running in your CLI to help you debug native Prometheus endpoints. And we have a link if you want to check that out. Um, and that's it for me. Cool, thanks, Han. That was really interesting. So now let's talk about logs and events. I'll start with events. So events in Kubernetes are uh, the way that users tend to interact with Kubernetes objects when they're first getting started, as well as when they're just trying to figure out what the heck's been going on. Um, to think about it in terms of telemetry, it's essentially like writing a structured log message to the API server that, Kubert, that uh, users are then allowed to query and show up and shows up in things like kube control top. Um, almost three years ago, uh, we found that we were having some scalability issues with events because they can be quite spammy. If something is crash looping, for example, that will emit a lot of events. Um, and so way, way, way back then, they came up with a plan for how to change the event object in order to make it scale better um, and add a little bit more structure to it. And now finally, three years later, we've graduated this new events API to GA um, and it's currently in use in many uh, components in the Kubernetes ecosystem. So great job, we moved something to GA. <laughs> For logging, this is probably the most um, simple form of telemetry, right? We're just writing things to files. So what the heck could we improve with logging? Well, it turns out that oftentimes you want to know uh, which things are being referenced in a log message. For example, if I have a log and it's about a pod, it would be nice to represent fields from the pod, such as the pod name, in a standardized way so that I can, if I'm a log ingester, then uh, I'm able to take those um, and search potentially over those attributes in my backend. So uh, SIG instrumentation worked on structured logging. And the method we chose to introduce this is to introduce new methods into the klog library. You'll notice that the info and error methods here are appended with an S uh, instead of the usual F for format. 
Um, and what this does is it allows you to set a message for your log line and then to add in key value pairs um, one after the other. So for, for example, the key might be pod uh, and the name or and the value might be the name of the pod. This is alpha in 1.19 and it can be enabled on any component in Kubernetes using the logging format flag. Um, and because there are certain log messages that people really care about, potentially some stuff in the API server or kubelet, um, we're starting with those log messages that people uh, find most impactful. And if you're curious about the details, feel free to check out the, the structured logging blog post. The next set of improvements we've been working on for logging is related to logging security. Uh, so as a general rule, it's a very bad thing to log credentials um, or other secrets into Kubernetes logs. And sadly, this has happened more than once in the recent past and came up in a recent um, security review by a third party. So we knew that we had to do something about it. Uh, and we are taking two approaches in the 1.20 release. The first is dynamic sanitization of logs, meaning when your Kubernetes component is running in your cluster and tries to log something that we think is bad, um, that log message will be um, blocked or otherwise modified so it doesn't contain the, the secret information. So that's, that's one method. Uh, and another method that we're going to be applying in 1.20 is static checking. Uh, and this is mostly during development. So you can think of this as we're basically adding pre-submits and EDE tests that go through or that run Kubernetes components, or no, that statically analyze all of our controller binaries uh, and look for points in which the secret information uh, could be logged uh, using the K-log libraries. So we we try and programmatically figure out where that could be happening. Uh, and this can be enabled with the logging sanitization flag. I believe that's for dynamic sanitization. Uh, and you can see more information uh, at the link to KEP here. Now let's talk about traces. Traces are exciting and new. In fact, this is the first time that Kubernetes is doing anything with tracing at all. So what are we tackling first? Well, we decided to start with the simple um, and straightforward use with tracing API server requests. The API server is a big HTTP server that runs at the heart of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and it would be really useful to know how long different requests take. And especially for those ones that don't behave as we expected, maybe they're too slow. Um, we'd like to be able to see detailed information about how that request passed through the API server uh, and onto other clients such as etcd. Um, so in 1.20, we're going to be adding distributed tracing to the API server using OpenTelemetry. And you can enable it by specifying a configuration file with the OpenTelemetry config file flag. If you'd like to read about, more about it, you can look at the um, KEP, which is linked below. All right. Thank you, David, for sharing all of this awesome work. I'm definitely super excited about the tracing work that's happening. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a great joke like Han to start out with. So let's just take it away and talk about some of our sub projects. Next slide. Um, so we have uh, three primary um, sub projects, um, which are Actually, we have a couple more, but these are this is the selection that we want to talk about this time, uh, this time around. Um, the first one being Coop State Metrics, which I believe may be the oldest subproject um, of SIG instrumentation. It is actually under the Kubernetes org. That's how old it is. Um, because I'm saying that because things don't get submitted to the Kubernetes org generally anymore. Um, then the other one that we that we're talking about today is the metric server, and we'll see what that is um, a, uh, a little bit later. And then the Kubernetes Prometheus adapter, which we'll also see. Okay. So first off, Coop state metrics. I think this is a really exciting component, um, and this really originated from a need um, where 
we were talking to a bunch of people in the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem who were also using Prometheus at the time. And the gap was kind of, uh, people were saying, well, Prometheus is great and Kubernetes is great, but when I actually troubleshoot my applications, I still drop down into kubectl and query things. It would be really handy if I had a lot of this information queryable in Prometheus. I can alert on it. I can do all these automated workflows with it. And so that's kind of where kube state metrics was born. And kind of the philosophy that we have with kube state metrics is that anything that can be a metric in a Kubernetes API object, so pods, deployments, stateful sets, you can pretty much find metrics about any API object that is um, available in Kubernetes as metrics in kube state metrics. And we kind of take everything that can possibly be a metric and convert it into Prometheus um, into the Prometheus exposition format. And then whenever Prometheus comes around, um, it just scrapes um, scrapes this output, output um, and ingests it. And then we can do really exciting things like what we have on the slides here, where we can say, um, well, I have some expected number of replicas, and I have an actual number of replicas. Um, of my deployment. And if these are not the same, then obviously something's not going um, the way it should be going. And we can write uh, pretty sophisticated and really uh, incredible alerting routes that have definitely helped me run applications on top of Kubernetes numerous times. So this is extremely helpful. Um, and uh, one exciting thing about Kube state metrics is that we actually just spend well, actually, over a year almost um, cleaning up the entire code base, um, and we've started doing a couple of pre-releases of a of a new major version of this this project. So please go ahead and uh, check this out, try it out, run it on your clusters, uh, give us feedback um, both in terms of performance um, as well as obviously whether things still work that they used to work. If you if you may already be running group state metrics, um, and the last thing that I think uh, I want to mention about group state metrics that's kind of unique about it is we've done a number of really incredible performance improvements where group state metrics doesn't actually use the normal Prometheus client because um, because of the nature of what group state metrics does it kind of converts every API object to a metric it tends to uh, get tends to have really huge metrics output. So um, I'm talking megabytes of slash metrics endpoints. Um, and so that uh, is a different dimension um, of <laughs> even writing bytes out to a, an HTTP request. So if you're interested in kind of performance work, there's lots still possible in kube state metrics. Um, so get involved into this project if th these are things that are appealing to you. Um, but we've already done a really incredible job, I think. We used to have tens of seconds of latency with uh, really huge clusters, and we've brought that down to uh, a handful of seconds um, in really, really huge clusters. So I think we've done a, a pretty good job, but there's always room for improvement. So yeah, that's what I have to say um, about kubestat metrics. Uh, so going on to the metric server. Um, you may, some people may not be aware of this component, but we've almost certainly used it or another variation of the resource metrics API um, because the resource metrics API is essentially the generic description of um, an API that can be used to request um, CPU and memory usage of pods, containers, and nodes. So if you've used kubectl pod, you've actually indirectly used this API because kubectl pod essentially requests a resource metrics API implementation. And the metric server happens to be kind of the, what we say, the, the default implementation of the resource metrics API. And uh, this, this API can also be used to um, auto scale your deployments um, on Kubernetes um, with resource metrics. So it, as I said, uh, CPU or memory and the varying um, kind of usages um, that that you uh, that you can kind of can configure um, and the the thing to kind of uh, 
Keep in mind here, this component essentially works very similar to Prometheus, but is kind of, uh, a very narrow scope. Uh, so it also goes around um, each individual kubelet and collects all of these metrics by pulling them, I believe, every minute, um, and then holds the state in memory. And then whenever there's a request, let's say from kubectl top, for example, um, then it presents the, the information that has been requested. Um, but this component is kind of intentionally very very narrow, so that we can uh, we can have very crisp expectations on the scalability requirements and stuff like that. So this is one possible implementation of the resource metrics API, and then we have another one. Next slide, which is um, actually something that we've we're just a project that we're just starting to adopt. So as as of this recording. Uh, the um, adoption of this project hasn't actually entirely gone through, but I expect that over the next couple of weeks, this will probably happen. It has already been ac uh, accepted by the basic instrumentation as a whole. Um, we just need to figure out um, some people signing the, the CLA. But essentially what this is, is much like the metric server is the default implementation of the resource metrics API, the Prometheus, Kubernetes Prometheus adapter is essentially an implementation of the resource metrics API, as well as the custom and external metrics APIs, which are also generic descriptions of metrics APIs. Um, and this one, uh, as the name already says, is backed by Prometheus. And why this is useful is because if you already have Prometheus collecting these metrics anyways, um, you might as well use Prometheus to present uh, these metrics to your users or use it for auto-scaling purposes, right? Um, that way, you don't have to have this extra process running in your cluster that uses uh, memory and CPU uh, to essentially collect the same things. This is really only if you're already running Prometheus anyways. I would, I would say that if you're not using Prometheus, this is probably a too complicated of a setup just to get the resource metrics API. In that case, the metric server is probably the better choice. But if Prometheus is already your choice monitoring system of choice, um, I would highly recommend you giving this a try. So that's all the sub-project selections that we wanted to share today. And now uh, back to Elena. Thanks so much, Frederick. That was awesome. Uh, so uh, you've heard a bunch about our SIG activities and uh, what we're working on. How can you get involved in that? So uh, first thing is, if you're interested in getting involved, attend our SIG meetings. That's the best way to get an idea of what's happening with the SIG, uh, what sorts of things you can work on, what sorts of projects are looking for contributors, uh, and uh, get to know uh, all the various people working on the various different components. Uh, you can also start participating in reviews and issues and documentation. Uh, all of those things were uh, happy to accept new contributors. And you don't need to ask for permission. You can just jump in, and we will take a look. Uh, in terms of specific projects, uh, Cube State Metrics is explicitly seeking new contributors. And you can reach out to Lily if you're interested in working on that. Uh, both metric server and the structured logging implementation are seeking contributors. Uh, and if you're interested in working on those, you can contact Merrick. Uh, and PromQ is also seeking new contributors. So if you want to work on PromQ, which Han introduced earlier, you can reach out to him or Solly or Yuchen. So how can you find us? Uh, we have regular SIG meetings effectively once a week. Uh, we have two alternating biweekly meetings. So our regular SIG meeting is on Thursdays at 9.30 AM Pacific time. Uh, and that alternates every other week with a triage meeting where we go over our PR and issue backlog. And those are on Wednesdays at 9 AM Pacific time. Uh, if you want to find uh, more information or uh, reach out to various folks in the SIG, you can uh, visit our Slack channel, uh, Pound SIG Instrumentation. Uh, you can join our mailing list, which is a Google group, which will also give you right access to the meeting agendas linked above. Uh, and if you need to know who's in charge of what, uh, just repeating again, the chairs of the SIG are myself and Han, and the tech leads are Frederick and David. 
Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention before we close out the talk is some other relevant talks from this KubeCon that we want to give some brief shout outs to uh, that go into a little bit more depth in terms of some of the things we cover today. There is an entire talk uh, discussing the structured logging implementation in Kubernetes 119. Uh, so highly recommend you give a look at that recording uh, if you're interested in what's going on with structured logging. That's been at least a two year long effort. So I'm very excited to see uh, that land and hopefully soon become GA. Uh, and as well, the CNCF SIG observability intro and deep dive talk is scheduled, I think, at the same time as this talk. Uh, so if you're watching this one, I recommend you take a look at that if you want to look at observability things in the wider cloud native ecosystem. Uh, there are, of course, many other uh, related talks. Uh, I don't want to talk about every single talk at KubeCon, uh, but you can check out both the observability and maintainer tracks uh, for more talks on Kubernetes observability and instrumentation. And thanks so much for joining us. I uh, hope you had a great KubeCon.